guys welcome back to another episode my name is Mobby and I recently played a game called the survivalist it's available on Steam PC Xbox one ps4 and the Nintendo switch for 2499 US and releases on October 8th I want to thank the devs and publishers for an early review copy however all thoughts will be my own the survivalist is a game that reminds me of don't starve there's a randomly generated island you need to eat to survive and the ultimate goal is to explore the island to find treasures in hopes of finding a way off to safety before we get started all footage you're seeing today is taken straight from my the survivalist playthrough that you can watch right now on my let's play youtube channel mobby vs games vod also follow me on twitch for live streams links are down below i'll be going over a bit of the story gameplay elements and other noteworthy things i feel needs to be mentioned for the survivalist in hopes to give you some more information to decide whether or not this game is right for you the game begins with you washed up on the beach of a randomly generated island there really isn't much else to that besides finding glass bottles that sometimes give you tutorial lessons and a bit of island lore your goal is to survive and find a way off the island you can change how your character looks at any time there's different clothes, hairs, and colors to mix and match. At any point in the game, there always seems like there's something to do. You can gather materials by chopping down trees, smashing rocks, and finding treasure chests littered throughout the world. With these supplies, you're able to craft things like beds to save and sleep, weapons for defense, workbenches, and much more. You can choose to make a base wherever you want. It's best to set up camp near tons of supplies, as every couple of in-game days, the island replenishes resources, trees, long grass, and even treasure comes back. Another thing to think about when deciding where to keep your save bed and inventory chest is how well you can defend it. You can go out and fight orcs and bats for resources, but sometimes they'll attack your base. You'll be notified and you just have to pray that you're either at the base when it starts or close enough to take them out before they do major damage to your structures. They can destroy your bed, so watch out. Luckily, you can build traps, walls, and lots of other buildings. It does take quite a while to set up your base alone, but fortunately, there's a system in place where you can tame and recruit monkeys to help you with a lot of the monotonous tasks. They can also help you fight and pretty much make island life so much easier. Monkeys can be obtained by finding them out in the world and feeding them food or saving caged ones in dungeons. They all have different names and can be recolored anytime for cosmetic or organization. They each have their own health bar and skills that increase just by making them do different actions. This is one of my favorite parts about the survivalist. The logistics and managing your base via these monkeys. They aren't the brightest AI and can only do simple tasks, but they are monkeys so it kind of makes sense. To make up for their limited actions, it's best to collect as many monkeys as you can. You can teach and tell a monkey what you want them to do. You first have to perform the action in front of them and make sure they have the correct tools and supplies at their disposal. For example, give a monkey an axe, whack a tree, and they should be chopping every tree in your immediate vicinity. They'll do this until no more trees are around and will simply wait around until more spawns. Same thing with gathering and crafting. You pick up an item and put it on a workbench with one monkey, then train another monkey to craft it while holding a building tool. If you've never played around with mechanics like these in the games before, it will feel a little overwhelming at first, but it gets easier once you figure out the best way to apply your monkeys to make island life easier. One thing to note is that the more you tell a monkey to do a specific job, they'll level up and get better at performing that job. They'll be faster and be able to pick up more items at once. Besides labor, you can have monkeys follow you around the island holding chests for more inventory while exploring and you can make them hold weapons to help you in combat. You can have as many monkeys as you want following you, but when in multiplayer, you can only bring five with you in your friend's game. Combat is pretty simple. Equip a bow and arrow, mace, swords, and more. You have a health and hunger bar that can be refilled by eating and a stamina bar that decreases while attacking, running, and dodging. While exploring and doing quests that you find via 
washed up glass bottles. You'll obtain gold. There are merchants that pop up all over the world that you can sell unwanted items and buy new equipment. They're very useful and I suggest always seeing what they have in stock whenever you see them. The gameplay loop kind of goes like this. Find a place to build a base, gather materials, make food, recruit monkeys, have monkeys fight for you and manage your base, run around the island for treasures slash dungeons, and find key items in order to find a way off the island. The Survivalist is one of those games that I can see being way better in multiplayer. While solo is fine and you do have the monkeys to help you, they are very limited and will only do what you tell them. Actually having another person exploring with you to hold more items and fighting or even staying at the base crafting and collecting resources should help immensely. This is especially more relevant when having to deal with raids. If you're out exploring far out, your base is screwed. The survivalist is pretty good. It can get a little frustrating sometimes when dealing with the monkeys. They are pretty basic but absolutely essential. They move all over the place and sometimes do something you asked them or didn't ask them to do. They are monkeys as I said before so it kind of makes sense but it feels like they weren't intended to act that way. Either way I recommend this game. It's fine solo but like I said this game will really shine in multiplayer. There's just a ton of tasks to do and surviving by yourself can get really lonely. Feels bad man. Remember all the footage you saw was taken straight from my Twitch live stream and is available to watch right now on my Let's Play YouTube channel Bobby vs Games VOD. All links are down below. As always like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks and I'll see you guys next time.